Folks, it's that time of year again. Another new FNAF game has graced our presence. Now, this franchise has forced me to talk about a lot of weird stuff, from artificial intelligence to cloning goop. But just when I thought it couldn't get any weirder, they give us a game about a time-traveling ball pit. This is the science of Into the Pit. Richard, hit that intro. For those who don't know, this weekend saw the release of Into the Pit, the newest game in the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise. At least, I'm pretty sure it was this weekend. I mean, they said it would come out August 8th when they announced it, but as of when I'm recording this, the Steam page still says coming soon, so it's very possible that they'll delay it or something and make me look like a total idiot. But, who knows? Well, I mean, I guess at this point, you, you probably know. But beyond that, calling this a new game might not entirely be true. This game is an adaptation of the first short story in the Fazbear Fright series from 2019 of the same title, Into the Pit. Now obviously, I don't have a time traveling ball pit myself, so I haven't been able to play the game myself to see how faithful it is to the short story, but based on trailer footage, it seems to at least have the same basic premise, namely, the ball pit time machine. For anyone new around here, on this channel, I like to take a look at some of the weirder and wackier inventions and technologies from the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise and try to explain all the real world science that might make them possible. And a ball pit that lets you travel through time? Yeah, I think that qualifies as weird and wacky. For anyone who hasn't played the game or read the book yet, to quickly summarize just the stuff that's important for today, this story follows a kid named Oswald. We don't ever get confirmation on what year exactly this story is set, but we do know that Oswald's dad was a child in the mid-1980s. So I'm gonna take a page out of Back to the Future 2's book and guess that this is set somewhere around 2015. Basically, the crux of the story is that Oswald discovers a ball pit in the back of an old restaurant called Jeff's Pizza. When he enters it, he's suddenly transported back 30 years to the year 1985 when Jeff's Pizza was a Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. When he comes back to the present, he returns to the same exact point that he left. But every day that passes in 2015, a day also passes in 1985. Oswald travels back and forth for a few days and has some fun in the old arcade, but of course, this is a Five Nights at Freddy story, so you know it's gotta have some dead kids at some point. One day, Oswald travels back to find himself right in the middle of the missing children's incident from FNAF 1 and sees William Afton, the future spring trap, and a bunch of dead kids in the back. Oswald dives back into the ball pit and returns to the present, only to be pursued through by Springtrap. It's in this moment that Oswald's dad arrives to pick him up. Springtrap grabs Oswald's dad, drags him into the pit, and this is where things start to get a little weird. When Springtrap re-emerges from the pit, there's no other way to describe it, he is Oswald's dad. He's a giant, mute, yellow rabbit who's incredibly hostile towards Oswald, and yet everyone else in the world, including Oswald's own mother, is like, well, yeah, yeah, that's your dad. I mean, I don't see any problems here. In an effort to find his real dad, Oswald runs back to the ball pit at Jeff's Pizza. He finds his dad's unconscious body at the bottom of the ball pit. He tries to pull him out when he's attacked by Springtrap. In what can only be described as a fight straight out of the WWE, Oswald springboards off the ropes of the ball pit, rakes Springtrap's eyes when the ref's not looking, and Hurricane Rodas him straight into the pit, where Springtrap hangs himself in the ropes like Maven vs. Triple H. Springtrap suffocates to death, and his dad wakes up, and they all live happily ever after. I assume the story just kind of ends and we never really find out. 
Now, there are two different interpretations of this story. There's a lot here to suggest that this ball pit is actually taking Oswald through time, and everything we see actually happens. But there's also evidence to suggest that it's more or less all the dream of a kid suffering from severe depression or some weird emotion-based magic that everyone keeps asking me to make videos about, even though there's literally no scientific basis to any of it, and I'm not really sure what I would say. And in classic FNAF fashion, there's not quite enough evidence to definitively say which answer is correct. So, for the sake of today's episode, I'm going to assume that this is a real time machine, and everything we see actually happens. Then, next week, I'll come back and look at the science of the other side. So, all I have to do is try and explain all the real science of time travel. Now, real science and time travel seem like two things that should never appear in the same sentence. You can't get much more sci-fi than a time-traveling DeLorean. But believe it or not, there's actually a lot of science and physics to back this stuff up. Sort of. The physics behind time travel is insanely complicated, maybe as complicated as physics can get, but it all stems from Albert Einstein's theory of special and general relativity, which describes the space-time fabric of the universe. To grossly oversimplify, physicists found that if you apply Einstein's equations in certain ways, it is theoretically possible to warp space-time in a way that would allow you to travel freely to any point in time. Now, the key word there is theoretically. It doesn't tell you anything about how you can warp space-time or instructions on how to build your own time machine. Essentially, there's nothing in general relativity that says that time travel is definitely possible. But there's also nothing that says that it's definitely not possible. So, in the absence of any real physics, scientists have resorted to conjecture and speculation as to how time travel may or may not be possible. And at the heart of these discussions lies one very important concept. Causality. The most common way to explain causality is with the grandfather paradox. If you went back in time and killed your own grandfather as a baby, well, then one of your parents would never have been born, which means that you would never have been born. But if you were never born, it means that you could have never gone back in time to kill your grandfather in the first place. You have violated the idea of causality. Your grandfather was killed by someone that cannot actually exist. Ergo, it should be impossible to go back in time and undo your own existence. So, the math and physics tells us that time travel should theoretically be possible, but our logic says that it's not. Over the years, various theoretical physicists have proposed various solutions to the causality problem. One of the most well-known is the many worlds interpretation, more commonly known as the multiverse. This is the type of time travel seen in the MCU in projects like Loki. Essentially, the many worlds interpretation states that our universe is one of an infinite number of parallel universes, with some being very similar to our own and others very different. This theory would suggest that when you travel through time, you're not actually returning to a point in your own past, but rather traveling to a parallel universe that's similar to your own, only set forward or back however many years in time. This way, you can travel back in time and do whatever you want. Kill your grandpa, prevent your parents from meeting at the Enchantment Under the Sea dance, it doesn't matter, because they're not actually your ancestors. Sure, this universe's version of you will never exist, but it won't have any effect on your own past. 
A different proposed solution that doesn't involve the multiverse is the Novikov self-consistency principle, which uses the idea of cosmic predetermination and suggests that if time travel exists, then free will cannot. Everything we do is predetermined, and no matter what we do while traveling through time, things will cosmically work themselves out. There's also the chronology protection conjecture proposed by Stephen Hawking, which basically speculates that there is probably some law of physics that explicitly prohibits time travel, and we simply haven't discovered it yet. The reason that Hawking believed this to be true was because of another problem that comes up with time travel, often referred to as the time travel tourist. Effectively, the problem is this. If time travel is possible and will be invented in the future, then where are all the time travelers? If people from the future are able to travel freely to the past, then surely we would have seen some of them come back for important events. Even if there are strict rules about its use or time travelers are required to come in disguises to maintain the secret, human nature being what it is, surely at some point someone would have tried to come back and blow the secret like they're in the Truman Show. And yet, we've never seen any of them. So what gives? Well, in a 1999 writing entitled Space and Time Warps, Hawking himself proposed a possible solution to this problem. It doesn't have an official name, so I'll call it the Time Travel Fridge Theory. To simplify it, as I mentioned before, the way time travel is possible is through the curvature of space-time. Effectively, you're not traveling to the past, you're bringing the past to you. Well, Hawking suggested that the space-time of the past is set in stone. We can't curve that space-time because, well, we didn't curve it and now we've lost our chance. In simpler words, the past is closed. But the future, Hawking speculated, is open. It has yet to occur, so we can curve it in any way we want. We could create a time machine that takes you to a specific point in space-time, or bend it so you can go wherever you want in space-time. And then, as that time becomes the past, that curvature is now set in stone, and we can travel through space-time as freely as we want. So, what does this mean? Well, effectively, it means that time travel is possible, but you can never travel back to a point before time travel was invented, before we learned how to curve space-time. How does this look in practice? Well, we often think of time machines as something that travels through time itself. So in Back to the Future, when you use the DeLorean, it vanishes in the present time and appears, along with everything in it, in whatever time you want. But what if instead of a car, the time machine was a fridge? Which, fun fact, in the original Back to the Future script, the time machine was a fridge until I realized that a car is just way cooler. I mean, who wants to time travel through a fridge? So, say you have a time machine fridge. According to this interpretation of time travel, you could place an item in this fridge and take it out at any point in time, even in the past before you put it in. You're all out of milk for your cereal, but don't feel like going to the store to get more? Eh, don't worry, you can just let your future self worry about that, and you can benefit from their hard work right now. It's a procrastinator's dream. However, you couldn't take an item out of the fridge before you built the fridge because, well, there's no fridge to take it out of. If this is how time travel works, then it would explain why we haven't seen any time travelers yet. You can't go back to a point before time travel was invented. Combine that with one of the other theories to address the issue of causality, and you have a time machine that, at least in theory, could totally exist without creating any insane paradoxes. Now, it's important to note that Hawking himself didn't really believe that this type of time travel was possible in real life. He was merely musing on one of the many issues of time travel. 
but we can use these ideas to try and get a better understanding of time travel in the fiction of Into the Pit. In this scenario, the ball pit is the time traveling fridge. You can jump into the ball pit and come out at another point in time, but you couldn't go back to a point before the ball pit existed because there's no ball pit to climb out of. Now, this does imply that Fazbear Entertainment invented time travel technology somewhere around 1985 and chose to hide it in a very public ball pit. So I guess we can just add that to the growing list of insanely advanced tech that this company developed decades ahead of its time and decided to use to try and sell pizza. Unlike our example, Oswald can't choose when he comes out of the ball pit. It always takes him the exact amount of time into the past, let's say 30 years to the day. But when he comes back to the future, he always returns to the exact same point that he left. Maybe this has to do with the specific way that the ball pit bends space-time. Uh, maybe he was simply programmed that way. Maybe William himself invented it so people could come back and watch all those murders he did. Uh, there's not really evidence to say either way, it's just how it works. While this explanation seems promising, it doesn't explain all the weird stuff that happens at the end, like, you know, Springtrap being Oswald's dad. This whole section totally violates the idea of causality that we talked about at the beginning. To recap, Oswald travels back in time and is chased to the present by Springtrap, who then kidnaps Oswald's dad and then becomes his dad. But if Springtrap were Oswald's dad, then the sequence of events from the beginning of the story that led to Oswald traveling back in time wouldn't have happened, which means that Springtrap could have never become Oswald's dad. Instead of the grandfather paradox, we've got the oops, my dad's a giant rabbit serial killer from the past paradox. In order for any of this to make sense, we pretty much have to be dealing with a many worlds interpretation version of time travel. I touched on it a bit at the beginning, but according to this theory, there are an infinite number of parallel universes that are each different from one another. But how different is each one? Well, that ties into something called the butterfly effect. In the context of the many worlds interpretation, the butterfly effect is the idea that any time you make a decision, there exists an alternate universe where you made a different decision. If you had cereal for breakfast this morning, there's an alternate universe where you had pancakes. There's one where you had eggs. There's one where you didn't have any breakfast. There's one where you started a fire while cooking your eggs and burned your house down. Some of these decisions won't change much, others will change a lot, and the further back you go, the more branches you can create. This is why scientists believe that if there is an infinite multiverse, then there is an infinite amount of universes that are extremely similar to our own, and an infinite more that are wildly different. And with an infinite number of possibilities, that means that somewhere out there, there is a specific set of decisions that would lead to a world where Springtrap is your dad. As to what this bizarre set of circumstances is, it's impossible to say. But remember, when Oswald uses the ball pit to travel from the past, he always returns to the present at the exact moment that he left. From Oswald's perspective, Springtrap pops out of the pit, grabs his dad, then immediately emerges as his dad. But from Springtrap's perspective, we have no way of knowing how much time he spent in the past in order to create a world where he is Oswald's dad. I like to think he took the slow approach. Maybe Oswald's mom moved back to her small country hometown after living in the big city and got a job at the same pizza place where Springtrap worked. They started off not liking each other very much, but slowly bonded over their mutual love of carrots and then became best friends. Springtrap is shy, but eventually works up the courage to ask her on a date. They share a romantic first kiss on Christmas Eve, get married in the pizza plex, and Bonnie is the best man. And anyway, after setting everything in motion, Springtrap comes back to the present where, thanks to all of his meddling, he is now Oswald's dad. Is it weird? Yes. Does it make sense that Springtrap would go through all that effort to become the father of some kid that he literally knows nothing about? No. 
But just like Einstein's theory of relativity and time travel, there's nothing to say that it's not possible. All in all, this explanation seems pretty buttoned up. The time travel fridge theory and the many worlds interpretation can explain pretty much everything we see in this story. Every time you enter the ball pit, you emerge not only in a different point in time, but in a different universe altogether. For such a strange story, this explanation makes a surprising amount of sense, except there's one problem. When Oswald runs from Springtrap towards the end of the story, he talks to his own real dad. So clearly he's in a pretty normal universe. Then Springtrap grabs his dad, drags him into the pit, and then emerges, and both he and Oswald are now in a universe where Springtrap is his dad. That would mean that Oswald was able to travel to another universe without going into the pit. So how is this possible? Well, there's no science-based explanation for this, but if we venture more into the world of fiction, we can make one small assumption about the workings of this time machine that could explain all of this. What if when two entities enter the time machine together, they become linked and now must always exist in the same universe, though not necessarily at the same point in time? So, Oswald and Springtrap enter the ball pit in Universe B, they both emerge in Universe C. Springtrap goes back into the pit into a new universe, Universe D, and brings Oswald with him, but at a different point in time. Springtrap woos Oswald's mom, becomes his dad, and then goes back into the pit to bring both Oswald and Springtrap into Universe E, now together again in the same time, and now Springtrap is his dad. They fight, and Springtrap dies. Now he and Oswald are no longer linked, and Oswald is in a universe where he does not have a dad meaning he cannot exist. But thanks to the Novikov self-consistency principle, we know that time will work itself out, so Oswald is shunted back to a universe where he has a normal dad and they all live happily ever after. Again, aside from just logic, there's nothing to say that this is definitively how time travel works. It's just the only explanation that makes sense to me at least. And uh, there you have it a full explanation for the frankly insane time travel logic of Into the Pit. It turns out this story isn't as complicated as it seems. As long as you have a basic understanding of general relativity, causality paradoxes, and the physics of the infinite multiverse. Although, there are still a few aspects of this story that don't make sense. Like Oswald's seemingly prophetic drawings of robot animals or his ability to conjure quarters out of thin air, then perhaps there is another explanation for all of this. One that doesn't involve time travel physics and multiverse logic at all. Perhaps it was merely all a dream. Well, I suppose the only way to find out is by going back and taking it from the top. <sighs> and a massive thank you to all my patrons, including Alkazam, Aspa102, Big Dog Tie for the win, Sidian, Gremlin the Goblin, Sherry and Mark, The Boss Killer 94, and Captain Kirby. This show would not be possible without your support, so thank you. <laughs>